ever. The moment Emma went missing, Margaret's life changed forever. She has thought about her every minute of every day. When William's Emma's father died in 2011, he made his wife Margaret promise she would never give up the fight for justice. Many will ask Margaret how she feels following the verdict. She says she feels no joy, no elation, no closure. The loss of Emma shattered a mother's soul, but finally the presence of justice allows mother Margaret to breathe again. It is only because of the perseverance of a mother and father and the many women who so courageously came forward that justice is possible today. Today, Margaret Colwell wishes to honour those women, some of whom were sex workers who spoke up not just for Emma, but for the many unknown victims of Ian Packer. But Margaret also wishes to acknowledge those who have been lost due to illness, overdose and other forms of harm. Those women were a part of our communities. They were important to their loved ones, to their families and should have been important to the police. A toxic culture of misogyny and corruption meant that the police failed so many women and girls who came forward to speak against Packer. Instead of receiving justice and compassion, they were humiliated, they were dismissed, and in some instances, they were arrested, whilst the police gifted freedom to an evil predator to rape and to rape again. We now know that Packer carried out rapes, sexual offences and assaults nearly 20 times after Emma's murder in 2005. Margaret believes that officers systematically sabotaged an investigation into Packer for a decade and have blood on their hands. For far too long, they have remained in the shadows but must now answer for their betrayal. Today, Margaret Colwell calls on the Scottish Government to order an independent judge-led public inquiry into what went wrong. The scale of the crimes and the failures are so catastrophic that nothing less than a judicial public inquiry will suffice. Neither the police nor Crown Office can be allowed or trusted to investigate themselves and their former bosses. Margaret, the many women who testified and the public must have faith that any investigation will be robust and transparent. Ultimately, Emma's family placed their trust in the word of the present Lord Advocate, Dorothy Bain KC. Today, Margaret Colwell is truly grateful to the Lord Advocate for keeping her promise and to Crown Counsel Richard Goddard, Kat McQueen and the Crown team, including Lynn Reid and Tony Bonner. The Crown Office has today shown itself at its very finest. Emma's family also wish to thank Police Scotland's murder investigation team, including SIOs Davy McLaren and Gay Mackey, who for some eight years have been unwavering in their commitment and dedication to delivering justice. They are the very best of policing. Margaret is grateful to the trial judge, Lord Beckett, and wishes to personally thank the 15 men and women of the jury. Today's jury has shown us why they are an essential foundation stone of our justice system, fulfilling one of the most important duties that any citizen in this country can be called on to do. Margaret is grateful also to the legal team at Amar Amwar Company who acted without fear or favor to campaign alongside her for justice. It should be noted that without the work of journalists such as Jim Wilson and Brendan McGinty of the Sunday Mail in 2015, this campaign would never have built the momentum required. Credit is also due to the BBC's Sam Pauling for her work that gave us more damning evidence against Ian Packer. Today, Police Scotland will finally apologise to Emma Colwell, to her family and many other victims let down by the police in 2005 and the decade that followed. Police officers stand accused of a shameful betrayal of these women to protect their own careers and of alleged criminality that allowed one of the UK's worst sex offenders to evade justice for 18 years. In July 2007, four Turkish men appeared in court. I acted for one of the accused, Abu Bekir Onku. In 2007, as lawyers, we were told that this was the most expensive and complex investigations ever, with four million pounds spent on accusing four innocent men. We very quickly discovered that the surveillance conducted over a course of a year proved absolutely nothing, that the translation was deeply flawed and at times imaginary. We also learned that Ian Packer was interviewed for the sixth time in March 2007, and it took officers to the spot. He took officers to the spot where Emma's body was discovered, telling them he took other women there. Those police officers were told to shut down that line of inquiry and to pursue the Turks. For over 10 years, the police perpetuated a lie, shutting down an investigation into the real killer, spying on journalists of the Sunday Mail 
and persecuting detectives who had done their duty in going after Packer. When the case collapsed in 2008, the police chose not to do anything further other than maintain a lie to Emma's parents, to William who was dying, that the Turkish men were guilty. In 2016, I was instructed by Emma's mother to act on her behalf to help bring her daughter's killers to justice. No grieving mother should ever be forced to set up a campaign to get justice, let alone a campaign that lasts nearly 19 years. Margaret believes she was betrayed by Strathclyde Police and by Sir Stephen House and his senior detectives. House was formerly Chief Constable of Strathclyde and Police Scotland and is now the Deputy Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police and I understand presently suspended. On Stephen House's watch in 2015, the Counter Corruption Unit unlawfully spied on police officers who blamed Ian Packer and tried to uncover the Sunday Mail sources when the police should have been more concerned with taking a serial rapist and killer off the streets. We were told that in May 2016, a third investigation called Operation Amonte, led by a chief and superintendent, was commissioned to reconcile a range of complaints and allegations received by Police Scotland and legacy forces in connection with the investigation of the murder of Emma Colwell. The family have no trust in the police or Crown Office investigating themselves. In the coming days, we have been told we will meet with the First Minister, with the Lord Advocate and the Chief Constable. If there is no time limit on justice, then any officers, retired or not, suspected of criminality, must be prosecuted. And those in our criminal justice system who gave Ian Packer his freedom should finally be held to account. Whatever a woman's job, whatever a woman's status, whatever a woman's addictions or vulnerabilities, it should never be used as a reason to ignore sexual violence or to treat them as second-class citizens. The homicide rate for sex workers in the UK is 12 times higher than for other women, and in Glasgow, it constitutes the largest single group of unsolved murders. Emma Caldwell mattered. The 25 women who spoke up mattered, six of whom are dead, and the many whose voices which we never heard in this courtroom mattered. Today, Margaret Caldwell and her family honour them all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Well, that is Amir Anwar, lawyer representing Margaret Caldwell, the mother of Emma Caldwell, reading out a powerful statement there on the court steps following the guilty verdict delivered for Ian Packer for the murder of Emma Caldwell back in 2005. And uh, Amir Anwar uh, reserving most of his fire at the police investigation. Remember, this took 18 years for them to wrap up this case. That is despite, as we have learnt through our correspondents, uh, Connor Gillies, and as Mr Anwar there repeated, there have been a number of instances before this moment where police Scotland were told that Packer was dangerous, that he had preyed on other sex workers in Glasgow were uh, Amir Anwar said a toxic culture of misogyny, corruption and arrogance meant that police officers effectively allowed a serial rapist to prey on vulnerable women. He also said that they are now calling for there to be a public inquiry into this case because the police and Crown Office cannot investigate themselves. Our correspondent Sadia Chowdhury is following this for us. And Sadia, look, uh, Mr Anwar, they're going through... Uh, a list of reasons as to why the investigation that eventually brought um, Ian Packer to justice was flawed and asking for there to be a proper inquiry into what happened. Yes, he was uh, calling for a public inquiry on behalf of Emma Caldwell's uh, mother, Margaret, who was standing next to him. She has for years campaigned to have this case reopened and to see it come to court. It's been a six-week trial and, of course, today, uh, Amr Anwar, the solicitor acting on behalf of Margaret Caldwell. She, he called uh, for a public inquiry uh, and detailed all these different things that led to uh, failures, uh, he says, from the police, including the wrongful arrest of four other men, initially missed opportunities uh, to hold Ian Packer to account. Uh, in the end, it took 19 years for the police to uh, complete that investigation of Ian Packer to be found guilty of those offences. And in that statement, uh, Amr Anwar saying, a woman's status, her job or her addiction should never be used as a reason to ignore sexual violence. Uh, and he said, to conclude, Emma Caldwell mattered. The 25 women who spoke up mattered. 
six of whom who are dead, and the many, many of those voices were never heard in this court. And he said, today we honour them. Sadie Shadri for now in Glasgow. Thank you for that. More on the story throughout the day. But for now, let's go to the city of my colleague Ian King with Business Live. Thanks, Kamali. The top business stories live from the Sky News City Studio. £1 billion wiped from the valley of the UK's biggest wealth manager, St James's Place, as its shares crashed by more than 32%. The Belgian based insurer Aegeus lines up a possible offer for the motor insurer Direct Line. Plus, the new generative.